In this video, we're going to take a look at the Vector Warp node. Now, the Vector Warp node utilizes the Pixel Processor. The Pixel Processor can be found on the Operational nodes, so I'll just tap the spacebar, and here you can see where the Pixel Processor is located. Now, the Pixel Processor is an image processing node. You can perform computations on an input using dynamic functions. Now we're not going to cover the pixel processor in this video, we're going to save that for a dedicated advanced tutorial. But for now, we can showcase what the pixel processor can do through the vector warp nodes. So here, I'm going to come over to the library, and I'm just going to search for vector. And so here you can see that we have two vector warp nodes, one for color and one for grayscale. So here I have the vector warp grayscale, and here is the vector warp color. Let's take a look at the vector warp grayscale first. So here I'll just zoom in to focus on these nodes. With the vector warp grayscale, I have two inputs. Here I'll just enable my connector names. And you can see that we have input and a vector map. Now, the second input, the vector map, the vector map is actually just a directional map, so it's just a map that contains vectors. We can feed that a normal map, or as you'll see in the case of the color vector warp, we can actually feed that a flow map. In this example, I'm going to utilize a normal map. So here I have the creased noise, so it's just one of the noises from the library, and I've used the normal node, so I'll hit the spacebar on the operational nodes, here's the normal node, and I can convert this noise into a normal map. So now I have some vector data that I can feed the vector warp node. So let's double click to load the vector warp here into the 2D view. Let's take a look at the parameters. So with this vector warp grayscale you can see that I have this intensity factor. And all I have to do is just start to increase this intensity to see the effect. So here as I start to increase the intensity you can see that I can utilize the vector information from the normal map to warp the grayscale input that I'm using in this first input. Now, this first input, let's just take a look at what this is. What I did was I just grabbed one of the materials from our PBR materials, and I'm just looking at the roughness. So here I took just this grayscale image of roughness, and I'm feeding that here into the first input, which is just basically, you think of that like your source input for the vector warp. And so again, I'm just using this vector data to warp that input. So here's the vector data. And here is the warped version of it. So as I mentioned earlier, the vector warp is utilizing the pixel processor to create this effect. And we have the option to change the vector format. So in this case, are we utilizing DirectX or OpenGL? In my case, this is a DirectX formatted normal. And like I said, again, I can crank this intensity. Now to get this to look, uh, or to have this level of intensity on the normal map itself, you'll notice here that I have a pretty large intensity as well. So if I just start to back this guy down, you can see that I can lessen this effect. So here we have uh, basically the degree of the vector information uh, using the intensity on the normal node. And then I'll come back to the actual vector warp node itself, and I can control the intensity here as well. So you can use the vector warp grayscale node to process grayscale inputs. Next up, let's look at the vector warp color node. And so here I have that in this location. Let's double click the vector warp node to view this here in my 2D view. So this node has two inputs as well. So we have an input and then we have a vector map. Now in this case, instead of feeding this just normal vector data, I'm actually feeding this a flow map. So here you can see that I have this flow map which contains vectoral data as well. For the source input, I'm using the same material again, however, I'm just grabbing this base color just so that I can have some color information. And again, that's fed into the input of the color vector warp node. So now I'll just select the node and we'll take a look at its properties. The parameters are the same as the grayscale vector warp node. So if I start to increase my intensity, and I actually have to make sure that I'm viewing the vector warp node here in the 2D view. So here I have my intensity, and we'll just kind of back this down a bit. And you can see that we're distorting that source image input based off this flow map. And here again, if we take a look at the flow map, you can see that we have, you know, Starry Night here. And you can see the shapes that this, um, that this vectoral data is creating. And we can visualize those shapes or that flow as we manipulate or process the pixels from that original source image to create this distortion. And again, that's driven here by this intensity. So just as with the grayscale vector warp node, you can utilize the vector warp color node to warp and distort color source input based on a vector map. 